No. Mr. Speaker, I rise in support of overriding President Ford's insensitive and ill-advised veto of the Health Services Act. This veto, along with his subsequent veto of the Education Appropriations Bill, is simply the last straw. It should be, at long last, clear to all of us that the time has come for Congress to fill the void in leadership that so clearly exists at the national level. We must firmly and assuredly take the initiative by refusing to allow the administration to continue to thwart desperately needed federal grants. The Health Services Act is a perfect example of where Congress has bent over backwards, perhaps too far, in order to make a piece of legislation palatable to the President. On virtually every provision in the bill, Congress accepted the lowest possible authorization level. The conference made it clear, both publicly and privately, that this was being done to avoid a presidential veto. In addition, the bill does little more than continue already existing vital programs with only 4% of the bill's authorization going for new programs. The newly authorized $73 million includes startup grants for such basic services as home health services, diagnostic and treatment centers for hemophiliacs, rape prevention and control, and hypertension screening. The remainder of the legislation simply extends funding for such programs as community mental health centers, neighborhood health centers, a variety of migrant health projects, and state public health programs, the National Health Services Corps, and nurse training. Mr. Speaker, health care in America is a disaster. A recent GAO report indicated that this problem is especially acute in urban centers and particularly bad in my own city of Cleveland, Ohio. The report made its conclusion all too clear with the use of infant mortality rates, a commonly used health indicator. The report noted that the national infant mortality rate in 1973 was 17.6 per 1,000 births, whereas it was 23.6 in Cleveland. Furthermore, it stated that in the eight social planning areas of Cleveland, where the poor are concentrated, the rate was 28.8. The rampaging inflation of the past few years has driven health costs up to the point where many Americans are forced to decide between their health and the health of their families and putting food on their table. This is wrong. This is an American tragedy. Until Congress passes a comprehensive national health insurance plan, which I hope will be one of the major accomplishments of the 94th Congress, the least we can do is continue operating already existing programs. One twelve and a half, five minutes.
ਕਰੋ